moment. We're going to we're going to start on our backs, but we won't be there for very long. And then we will be doing some things on our side. So you don't have to have a cushion here, but I know some of you, Nigel, I know you like to have a cushion under the side of your head. And we're going to be doing a few things here. So we're, we're going to be doing our usual where we let everything move. And then we'll be doing a bit where we clamp, we fix the knees and we just slide this top arm with the elbow straight. And also one where we clasp the hands and just move the knees. So yeah, we'll spend a little bit of time on our side. But first of all, you're going to be on your backs. So you can lie onto your backs. And if anyone else joins us, I think if anyone else is joining us today, they can join us. So yeah, onto your backs. And you can't see me if I lie down, can you? No, but that doesn't matter too much, Jan, because you probably know what you're doing and you can. Yeah, that's true. Hear me. So yes. Yeah. You might like to admire me. <laughs> no, of course I'd like to admire you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and say, Jan, that looks so beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just, I just know that. I, I just know that it is. It is. <laughs> okay. So I will meet everyone, I think. But remember, this, um, I've worked out this new thing in Zoom that if you press your space bar, and hold it down you can speak without having to unmute yourself so if you need to speak do that so yes first of all lie onto your backs and settle down and just take a couple of moments to notice how you feel so on this sort of warm but maybe a little bit breezy morning and yeah just a sense of how is your body today and sometimes Certainly I know for myself that I have to start moving a bit to really get a sense of how I feel. So we will do that. We're going to bend our knees and stand our feet on the floor. And take a moment to feel your footprints on the ground. Yes, that's nice, Nigel. And settle the back of your pelvis on the ground. And then when you're ready, start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left. And use this movement to help you feel how your body is today so i suppose particularly around the pelvis the lower back and i know for myself if i'm going to be feeling a bit creaky it's usually around the lower back and i think this is probably the case for a lot of of people so again, if you've been sitting a lot, doing computer work, if you've been doing a lot of gardening, these are the places where we can feel stiff. Good. So just a few more times, keeping the movement easy. Yes, that's good, Rashmi. I think you've taken your feet a bit wider apart and that, look, that looks better. Good. So just a few more times, letting the knees tilt to the right and to the left. And from here, you're going to come onto one side and it doesn't matter which side, be on the side you're most comfortable on first. And so you might find that it's, more, it's not so comfortable lying on one shoulder or it might not be so comfortable having one shoulder on top. So just try and come onto the most comfortable side first. I just want to shut the door. <laughs> My family start making noise in the background. Yes, on your side. And you're going to, when you come onto your side, have a cushion under the side of your head if you like. So you don't want to have your arm under your head. Yeah, so cushion under the side of your head. You can have your arms just comfortably in front of you, um, resting down, soft and relaxed. So let the top elbow rest down rather than sort of lifting up. Um, and your knees at a right angle to your body without getting too mathematical. Knees at a right angle to your body. Yes, that's it. And, and I think like you've just done, Reshmi, slide the feet sort of forwards a little bit on the floor. So the, yeah, not probably no further than that though, Nigel. So there's also a right angle at the back of your knees without, <laughs> without sounding like a maths lesson. Good. And then the first thing you're going to do is be quite sort of relaxed with this. And you're, from starting on your side, you're going to let yourself roll from the side of your head towards the back of your head and just let your top arm follow so the top arm's going to stay relaxed and that's it just rolling from the side of your head towards the back of your head and let your top knee slide on your bottom knee 
And I would keep that top arm quite relaxed and resting down on your body rather than bringing it too much up into the air. Because what we're trying to do here is think about, yeah, the movement of the ribs. And yeah, at the moment, less really about the shoulder, more about the ribs. And yeah, I think so. The center of ourselves. So a few more times, sort of rolling from the side of the head towards the back of the head, letting your top knee slide on your bottom knee and seeing how it feels. And then we're going to sort of focus in a little bit. So what I would like you to do now is to keep your knees together. So have your top knee on top of your bottom knee and you're not going to let that knee slide. And then you're going to reach both arms out in front of you on the floor. So the arms are sort of going straight forwards away from you. And you're going to keep your top elbow straight. So what I'd like you to do is start to slide your top hand forwards beyond your bottom hand. So forwards is away from you. Rashmi, I can't quite tell, but your arms need to be going straight out. That's it. Your mum's just helped you. That's it. Good. So top hand sliding straight out beyond the bottom hand and then top hand sliding up your arm but stopping before your elbow bends yeah so you're basically sliding that top hand forwards away from you and back up your arm and just see that's it good so it's not going to be the biggest movement because you're stopping before your elbow bends that's it good so slide the hand forwards, slide the hand back. Obviously let yourself roll a bit from the side of your head towards the back of your head, but it won't be such a big movement if you keep your top elbow bent. No, straight, sorry. Good. Okay. And then change the movement. What I'd like you to do now is clasp your hands together. So interlink your fingers. So now you're not going to move your arms and you're going to slide your top knee. So let the top knee slide up your thigh a little bit and then let the top knee, ah, so you don't need to move the feet. The feet stay together. So just as you were letting your legs do earlier, you're letting that top knee slide forwards beyond the bottom knee. And then you're letting that top knee slide up your thigh a bit. That's it. But keep the feet together. So you don't need to move. That's it. Just leave the feet relaxed. The feet don't need to move. It's just the top knee sliding forwards and back. And notice as your top knee slides forwards and back, the top side of your pelvis moves forwards and back. But again, it's quite a small movement. That's nice. Good. Okay, and then release your hands and you can start to let your arms move. So you can start to let yourself roll more now. So you can let your knees, your top knee slide. You can let yourself roll from the side of your head towards the back of your head. You can let your top elbow bend. And if you want to roll further, so to take your top shoulder towards the floor behind you, you can do you might need to let your top knee come away from the bottom knee. So you might need to let the top knee lift up towards the ceiling a little bit. Keep the arms really relaxed. So the hands don't need to be sliding on each other anymore if you don't want to. You can let your top arm come to lean on your body. You can let your top, top arm come back behind you. Very nice. Okay, lovely, lovely. Good. And then from here, roll back onto your back. And just settle on your back for a few breaths. So lie however you're most comfortable. Let your breath come in. Let your breath leave you. Have a few breaths on your back. And then when you're ready, you're going to move over onto side two. So we're going to do exactly the same thing on side two, on your side. Um, so rolling 
to the other side, settling yourself down with your cushion under your head if you like, and your knees at a right angle to your body. That's it, and the feet also coming forwards a little bit. So you, you start on this side, how we, how we just finished, by letting everything move. So you're rolling from the side of your head towards the back of your head. Keeping your top, top arm sort of soft and relaxed, letting your top elbow bend. So coming on to side two when you're ready. If you're not on the second side, yeah, come on to your second side and settle down there. So knees at a right angle to your body. That's nice. Rolling. From the side of your head towards the back of your head, Rashmi, bring your feet forwards a little bit on your mat. That's it, even that's it, and your knees up a little bit. Good, that's it. So rolling from your side towards the back of your head. Letting your top arm be relaxed, letting your top knee slide on the bottom thigh. So we're not trying to fix anything at the moment, we're letting everything come along with the movement. Rashmi, it looks to me that your knees need to be higher up. Yeah, feet, so knees up a bit at a right angle to you and feet further forwards. That's it, that's more like, yeah, that's it, good. Okay. Now, I would like you now to think about the knees not sliding on each other. So can you organize your knees so there's one on top of the other and you're gonna keep your knees together? And then you're going to reach your arms out straight in front of your chest. And you're going to do that movement where we slide, we keep the top elbow straight and we slide the top hand beyond the bottom hand and then up your arm a little bit, stopping before your elbow bends. That's it. And you want to feel how your shoulder moves forwards and back with the arm. And also you probably roll a bit from the side of the head towards the back of your head. So it's not just the shoulder moving, it's also your rib cage moving and your spine. So do this movement a few times, sliding your hand forward, sliding your hand back, up your arm, but not letting your knees slide. So just pay attention to what your knees are doing. And then let's try the opposite movement where you're going to keep your arms in the same position but interlink your fingers so you're clasping your hands. So the arms are out in front of you, you're clasping your hands on the floor. And now you're, trying, you're coming back to that movement of letting your knee slide forwards beyond the bottom knee and then letting your knee slide up your thigh a bit. That's very nice, good, beautiful. Yes, so the top side of the pelvis is moving forwards and back. Good, lovely. lovely. So again, it's not a huge movement, but it's quite a focused movement. So notice what you feel. Very nice, good. Keep the feet together, the feet can stay quiet. They don't really need to do anything. Good. And then, release your hands and let everything start to move together again. So let the top arm start to slide back, keeping and let the elbow bend, let the top knee slide back, let yourself roll from the side of your head towards the back of your head. If you want to, you can make the movement a bit bigger. So you, you're thinking about taking your top shoulder towards the floor behind you which for some of you might mean you need to let your top knee come up away from the bottom knee towards the ceiling. You don't have to go that far, it's entirely up to you. You might wanna keep the knees heavy, the top knee heavy and not go so far, or you might want to let the top knee come up so that your shoulder can come onto the floor. Or you might find that the top knee can stay heavy and the shoulder can come onto the floor. That's it. 
So we just, you can, yeah. And if you have got your, if your top shoulder has come onto the floor behind you and you want to have a few breaths there, and I can see some of you doing that, then that's a nice thing to do. And we will come back onto our backs in moments. So when you're ready, you can come back onto your back and have a couple of quiet breaths. Just let yourself arrive onto your back and lie however is comfortable. Yes, and get rid of your cushion probably at this point. Good. So have a couple of quiet breaths on your back and then we're going to do just a couple of movements here. So lying on your back, letting your breath come in, letting your breath leave you. So those movements on our side really help to mobilize um, the whole of our spine and our ribs and our pelvis. So yes, that's what we're going to do, Sheila. When you're ready, you're going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. And come to tilting your knees to the right and to the left and see how that movement feels. But lovely, looks really nice. So hopefully it probably feels a bit smoother than it did earlier when we first of all did. Yeah, that's very nice. Maybe a little bit more integrated with the whole of your body. That's it. So knees tilt to the right and to the left. And then pause in the middle. We're going to carry on with this movement, but I'd like you to cross your arms over your chest. So give yourself a hug. And then start to rock from side to side. That's it. So let your elbows now go as well. Sorry. So there's the knees go to the right. So do the elbows. And then everything goes to the left. The head as well. That's it. Rashmi, just make sure you've got one arm completely on top. So, yeah, so you've got the bottom hand needs to come out so it's below. Yeah, because I think you've, I'm not quite sure what's, what's going. Yeah, that, that, that's it, like that. Yeah, that's good. Good. Okay, so you might want to rock onto your side and just have a few quiet breaths on your side because we're actually going to come over into standing so you can rock onto your side you can contemplate the prospect of coming into standing so i'm just going to unmute people for a moment I'm unmuting a few people. If it, I might leave people unmuted. If it, if it gets noisy, um, your end, please mute yourselves. But there's not loads of us today, so it might be okay. And if, it get, if, it get, if you feel it's getting noisy, just let me know and I can, um, I can mute everyone. But sometimes it's a bit nicer to have a bit more you know, noise rather than silence. So come onto your mats. So then we do a couple of sort of easy things. Yeah, so maybe first of all, just arriving in standing, because we have been lying down for a little while. So arriving in standing, looking at your feet on the floor, and then just, yeah, feeling your feet on the floor. And perhaps a little bit of rocking from side to side. And how does that feel? So as we start to sway from side to side, we get a bit more feedback from higher up in our bodies. We might get a sense of how our knees are feeling today, how the hip joints are feeling. Maybe give the arms a little bit of shake. Good. And then just maybe for a moment, just settle in standing and close your eyes. We won't be here long at all. Close your eyes and see how it is to be in standing. And I think I was talking maybe at the end of last week about standing being this process that um, it takes us a while to settle into it. We won't be there just yet. So open your eyes and then, you know, <laughs> we are obviously in standing, but maybe not the whole of us is really settled here. So on one level we're in standing and another we're not. Good, so let's swing the arms. We can slap the hands onto the body. Very nice.
Good. Okay. And then we'll, nice to hear the slapping noises. And then we'll do a little bit in the center of reaching up. So I'm quite into these movements at the moment. So from here, we can be reaching up through one arm and then the other. So as you reach through one arm, shift your weight over onto that side. Reach and reach. So we're feeling long through the sides of our body. A couple more times, reach and reach. And then from here, we're going to sweep down into a forward bend. But if you feel your lower back needs the support, come to here first of all. If your back feels fine, then let yourself come all the way into a forward bend. And just notice how you feel. So um, I was doing some practice before the class started and my lower back did feel a bit, you know, did feel bad, but just a bit tight. So be aware that each time we come forwards, it's going to release a little bit more. And bend your knees as much as you like. So bending the knees will just help ease things off a bit. So let a breath come in, and as you exhale, sink into your heels and roll back up into standing. So we're gonna work with some sequences of movements today. We're gonna to start from the back of the mat, doing some movements from here, and then later on we'll move into a bit of sun salute, um, ease ourselves into sun salute. So, yes, with the mat in front of you, with your hands in prayer pose, so we'll, we'll start off um, like some salute, and we'll be going into a forward bend and dog, and then down onto hands and knees. So with your hands in prayer pose, let a breath come in as you exhale, take your arms down and then up, let your shoulders drop, and then as you exhale, rolling forwards into your forward bend. <sighs> let your head go. And then big hand prints, walking your hands forwards into dog pose. So again, just seeing how this first dog pose feels. Look at your hands for a moment, check their sort of level, in a similar place. Have a couple of breaths here, but don't stay there too long. Coming down onto hands and knees, and we'll do some movements on hands and knees. So you could settle here, you could settle here by just doing a little bit of circling of your shoulders over your or rather just circling around your hands, circling your hands. And then we'll move on to some cat movements. So when you're ready, rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine to the floor. So again, these are movements that help, as well as releasing tension and tightness, they start to inform us about how our body's feeling. So when you round your back up, Maybe you become more aware of tightness in the lower back. As you dip your spine down, you might become more aware of tightness in the upper back. Rounding and dipping. And letting your breath flow in and out. Now from here, in a moment, from your rounded up cat, staying rounded, you're going to rock your hips back over your heels and settle down into child pose, just for a few breaths. So seeing how child pose feels at this point. Resting the elbows on the floor, having your elbows nice and wide apart, letting your forehead settle down. Feel the breath come in, feel the breath leave you. Coming back onto standing, no, sorry, standing, hands and knees, what am I talking about? Um, it might be quite nice to lengthen each leg back behind you in turn. So tucking your toes under, lengthening your leg out, let the back of the knee open and do the same on the other side. And then we'll do some of our tail wagging movements here. So back on hands and knees, imagining you have a tail, a dog's tail, a fish's tail, and wagging your tail, swishing your tail from side to side. And see how this feels. So these are these movements where one side of our body is shortening, the other side is lengthening. Now, 
we can do this movement also. So I wanted to do the variation today where we're taking just one leg out to the side. So you take one leg out to the side and look towards the foot and repeat that a few times. You're repeating the same side a few times, taking the leg out, looking at the foot. And obviously don't go really quickly or you'll start to feel dizzy and then do the same thing on the other side. So the lower leg and the foot come out to the side and you look towards the foot. And you could also feel what's going on through the sides of your body. So the side where you're moving the lower leg and you're looking towards that foot, you get shorter in that side of your body and the other side gets longer. And then you can do both legs together, um, little fishes. Now, if you want to look at your feet, you can do, but just maybe again, don't go too quickly. So little fishes, you can take the legs very quickly, but maybe don't look at them unless you want to make yourself busy. From here, let's just sit back in, I say sit back into kneeling, but if kneeling, um, Nigel's not so comfortable, sit into up, and just come into up kneeling, or if you have got a cushion nearby, you can slide the cushion under your bottom, because we're really just coming into kneeling to give the hands a shake out. Because we're going to come back into dog pose now. So dog pose, forward bend, rolling back up into standing. Bring your hands onto the floor, nice big hand prints. Actually, before we come into dog, I just would like you to tuck your toes under and do a little bit of this rocking forwards and back. So we'll be moving into dog pose from this rocked back position eventually. And the idea being that we're going to try and keep resting through the arms, nice and relaxed in the shoulders as we start to open the legs out. So we might end up in a dog where the knees are quite bent and then we're easing into one leg and then the other. And we're trying to feel that the shoulders are not working. And the shoulders and arms are not getting too tense. We're resting down through the bones of our arm. Okay, and then from here, start to walk your hands in towards your feet. So we end up in a forward bend. We've got all of our weight in our feet. We can take our hands off the floor if we wanted. We can bend our knees as much as we like. And then we'll come up into standing, we're touching the backs of the hands together. So you trail your hands up the front of your body, straight up to the ceiling. You let a breath come in. And then exhaling, take the arms out in a big circle all the way down. We've lost, we lost somebody. Maybe everyone's moved around. <laughs> Just, uh, I love the way Zoom does this. It's all very, confusing. We all okay everyone? Yeah, yeah. Good. Is the sound okay? Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, good. So I'm glad it's nice not to have to be muted. So let's um, bring the hands back into prayer pose. We're going to go down onto the floor and do some different things. So just feel your feet on the floor, feel the contact of your hands. Let a breath come in and as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Let a breath come in and then exhaling down into your forward bend once more. And see how that forward bend feels. Let yourself arrive in the forward bend. Feel yourself there. Weight going down through your heels, floppy arms and head and shoulders. And then you can start to walk forwards on your hands into dog pose. See where you want to get to. I'm going to have a look at your dogs. Very nice. Yes, have a few breaths in that dog. That's it, Rashmi. Maybe don't go too far in your dog. You might not want to be really long. It's always, yeah, you may want to be really long, but um, you don't have to. Really let the head go. That's nice. And then coming back onto hands and knees. So we're going to settle on hands and knees again. We're going to do a few cat movements. This time we're going to use cat to try and find the sort of middle place where we're neither rounding or dipping. So check that your hands are well settled on the floor. 
And then a few cycles of cat, rounding your back, looking back towards your feet, dipping your spine, letting your gaze come forwards along the floor. And from these cycles of cat, rounding and dipping, can we find a place where our spine and our back is fairly just long and flat? We're looking down at the floor, maybe just slightly forwards of our fingertips. And then from here, we're going to come into fox pose, where we take the opposite arm and leg forwards and back. And we'll do both sides. So opposite pairs, arm and leg, forwards and back. It's a little bit of a balance. So we're trying to feel steady in this position. Breathing, keeping looking down at the floor, just slightly forwards of the fingertips. Got a couple of breaths on this side, if you can hear it. And then we swap sides, we come down and we do the other side. So come back down, as you exhale, take the opposite arm and leg, pair up. So you're reaching forwards into your fingertips, you're reaching back, you can play around with the back foot, you can tuck, point the heel away from you, you can point the toes away from you. Quite nice to do a bit of both. And again, you're looking down at the floor. Gaze is slightly forward at the fingertips. See if you can feel the breath come in, the breath leave you. And then bring your hand back down onto the floor and your knee as well. You're going to round your back up into cat and rock back into child pose for a couple of breaths. So separate in child pose. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you, and particularly in this child pose, let the hands and the wrists rest. Elbows on the floor, very nice, lovely. Beautiful. So we'll be coming back onto hands and knees in a moment. Now, this time, actually it might be quite good when you come out of child pose, to lengthen your legs out behind you because we're going to come into plank pose and this would just be a good way to check that you're far enough forwards on your mat. So lengthen each leg out behind you, tucking your toes under. If at this point you've come off the end of your mat, then move forwards. Before we come into plank, I would like you to come back into those little cat movements again to help you find that neutral place. And pay a bit of attention to where you're looking. So when you round your back to the ceiling, you look back. When you dip your spine down, you look forward. So where we look in plank pose is quite important. It's the same as fox. We want to be looking down just slightly further forwards of our fingertips. So we can see how plank pose feels now. So we're going to keep our shoulders over our wrists. We're going to lengthen one leg back behind us, tuck the toes under, and then add the other leg in. And I'm going to come and have a little look at you in your beautiful plank poses. Yeah. So, there we go. And just don't stay there too long. Aditi, you look like you're hanging your head slightly. That's it, good. Well done. That's it, good, good, good. Very nice. Yes, don't, yeah, very well, well done, everyone. Let's do, do come down when you've had enough and sit back in kneeling or it being up kneeling and shake your hands out. We're going to do another plank pose and this time we'll take it into dog pose and then you may want to walk your feet in a bit in dog to make it a, a better length of dog. So, yes, come back down. Might be, yeah, sorry, but you might be good to do this one before you come back down into plank again. So where you're bringing the backs of your wrists together, dropping your elbows. So come back down again towards the front of your mat. So really remember in plank that we're trying to keep our shoulders over our wrists. So we're supported through the bones of our arms. <clears throat> Lengthen one leg back and then the other. We're really stretching the heels back behind us. And then finding that point for our gaze. So we're looking on the floor, just a little bit further forwards than the fingertips. And we're trying to breathe. <laughs> Not the easiest thing with plank pose. And from plank pose, whenever you're ready, 
exhaling, sending your pelvis up and back into dog. See how it feels for a couple of breaths in this long dog pose. And then if you like, walk your feet in a little bit and see if you can find the more sort of comfy dog. Walk your feet in, maybe bend your knees a bit more. Really let the shoulders soften. And then we'll walk the hands in towards the feet once more. So coming into our forward bend. All of the weight into the feet. Let the head go, let the arms go. Feel your heels sinking into the floor. And then touching the backs of the hands together. Rolling up into standing, trailing your hands up the front of your body, straight up to the ceiling. Let's <coughs> Come in, take your arms wide. Good. And then exhale all the way. Very nice. So we're going to go down through one more cycle of the sequence, again doing some different things on the floor. So just take a moment here in standing to feel your hands, to feel your footprints on the ground. Good. And then letting a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Let the breath come in and then exhaling down into your forward bend. And give yourself a couple of breaths here. Let the knees bend. Let the weight of your body tumble forwards, the head, the shoulders, the arms. And then Walking your hands forwards into dog pose. Just a breath or two in dog. I don't want us to stay here too long. Breath or two in dog and then down onto hands and knees once more. So from hands and knees, we're going to be coming into lunge. So step one foot forwards between your hands and then walk the back leg back a little bit. Now, when we come shortly to do some sun salute, we're going to just look a little bit, or take them out and not do them, but also look a little bit at the lunges, because I think they can be quite challenging for a lot of us. So, in this lunge, we can just maybe acquaint our body with how does it feel. So we've got this front knee over our front heel, front foot is planted, Back toes could be tucked under or flat. And we're just trying to let our pelvis be heavy. So make sure you've walked your back knee back a little bit, if that's possible for you. And have a couple more breaths here. So let the breath come in. <sighs> let the breath leave. And we'll swap sides for lunge. So we do that on hands and knees, unless you're very desperate to go into dog. We'll go into dog after the second lunge. So swapping sides, bringing the other foot forward. So it's not always an easy movement. I really understand that with lunge. It can feel a bit awkward. It's, you know, it's one of the things we do in yoga where there is really this feeling of quite a strong stretch through the back of the thigh which is why we do it, but it also can be quite challenging. So making sure your front foot is really planted on the floor, your front foot is parallel, you're able to give your weight down into your foot. Breathing, see whether it's better with your back toes tucked under. Obviously when we're in sun salute, the back toes would be tucked. And then from here, we're going to go, you could go straight into dog if you want to from your lunge, or you could go onto hands and knees. So I'll leave that choice up to you. If you want to go straight into dog, you're planting your hands down as soon as you can, and you're stepping that front foot back. And it might be a bit of a long dog, you might need to walk your feet in. You might want to walk your feet in. And from this dog pose, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to have a look at you. You'll fold down into child pose whenever you want to. So, have a little breather in child. Good. Let the shoulders rest. Let the hands rest. Let the wrists rest. And then in your 
your child pose, I'd like you to plant your hands on the floor. It's fine that you, your elbows could be on the floor or not on the floor, but you want to feel that your hands are fairly wide apart. So plant your hands on the floor and then come up onto hands and knees in this position. So it probably means that you're in a longer hands and knees position. If it doesn't, you might want to just organize yourself a little bit. And your hands, if your hands like mine were a bit too wide, they might come in. So you probably now want your hands shoulder width apart. And I just want you to start thinking about this rocking forwards movement that takes us towards face up dog, but we not, might not be quite ready to go there. Or you might be raring to go there. So we're resting through the bones of the arms. We're just saying, what's it like to bring the weight forwards to let the pelvis hang? And just make sure you're checking, you're looking at your hands, the shoulder width apart, are the hands in a helpful place? Do you need to change where the hands are? How does your lower back feel? You don't have to be going all the way into face up dog because we'll do a bit more in a moment. So just the sort of edging towards it. And then let's sit back into kneeling again, up or down kneeling. So have a cushion if you need one or be up here and shake your hands out. And once more, bring the backs of your wrists together. And so I know this is really familiar for all of you, so you may well not need to watch it at all. But what I'd like you to do is come back into this long hands and knees position. And now moving to face up dog by rounding your back. So the toes are tucked under, you round your back, you rock back, and then you travel forwards looking back towards your pelvis until your shoulders are with your wrists. Yeah, so we'll do this one a few times, just forwards and back. Rounding our back, traveling back. Let a breath come in so you're traveling forwards on an out breath. You're really rounding your back, you're really looking back until your shoulders are all the way over your wrists. Then you let the pelvis go and you look forwards. And then you reverse that movement once more. So tucking the toes under, rounding your back up, rocking back, looking back behind you. And then right, let the breath come in as you exhale. You're still looking back behind you. Coming forwards into face up top. Good. Now, let's just rock back into the child for a moment. Take the weight off your wrists and then maybe from there come into kneeling so you can just give your hands a shake out and you can watch the next. Thing we're going to do so we're going to be and this is it's up to you whether you want to do this so we'll come into one more face up dog and then from this face up dog we'll move into the other face another face up dog variation where you tuck your toes under and then from there you could go all the way up into your dog and it's a bit long so you'll need to walk your feet in if you don't want to do that you can come straight into dog from hands and knees um, and then we'll be going into a forward bend and back into <coughs> So if you're wanting to do that face up dog, onto this long hands and knees, tucking your toes under, rounding your back up, rocking back, and then traveling forwards on your out breath, looking back behind you, ending up in face up dog. And then in face up dog, we tuck the toes under. This can be a bit challenging for the lower back. Like my knees are off the floor now, so it's just my toes and my hands. And on a big exhalation, I send my pelvis up and back into dog. And then I set my feet in until they feel they're in a good place for dog pose. And I have a few breaths. And then we're going to walk the hands in towards the feet, into the forward bend, arriving in your forward bend. This Feeling settled here, feeling the weight going down through your heels. Let the breath come in, let a breath leave you. 
And then with the next exhalation, touching the backs of the hands together, rolling up into standing, taking the arms up to the ceiling, letting the breath come in. Exhaling. Come towards the middle of your mat and just have a little bit of a shake out. So we're going to settle in standing. We're going to do quite a quiet balance, um, which I haven't we did at the end of last week, but the rest of you won't have done before. And then we're going to come and do a little bit of sun salute. So just settle in standing. So have a look at your feet. And then, yes, yeah, settle yourself in standing. Closing your eyes. Just how does it feel to be in standing? You might like to let your weight sway a bit from side to side. Let your arms hang. Feel that the hands are hanging off the ends of the wrists. You can shake your hands out if you like. This idea that you just come to, I suppose, a moment of stillness after the movement and between, before more movement. And if you open your eyes and you're just going to watch me for a moment in this balance. So what we do here is we bring our weight. We're going to bring our weight onto our right foot first. And so watch and then we'll do it together. And you're going to, I've brought my left foot around the back of my right ankle. Over, it's not very helpful. Um, and then I'm going to bring my right hand up like this. And my left hand is down. Both palms are facing forwards. Um, and the hands are soft. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So it's quite a quiet little balance. So you're going to bring your weight onto your right foot. If when you bring your foot around the back of your ankle, you want to have some toes on the floor, that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, you'll just yeah, bring the foot around the back of the ankle, the back of the shin, the back of the calf, I think it is rather. And then your right hand comes up, palm facing forwards, your left palm is facing forwards as well, with your left elbow a little bit bent. And then we're just seeing how does it feel to settle here. Let the breath flow in and out. And if you the wobble and fall out, that's fine. Just find your way back into the balance. Center of the palms soft if the hands start getting a little bit heavy. Very nice. Come down and have a little bit of a shake out. It was interesting to notice how that feels through. So but before we do the other side, it's just interesting to see how the two sides of our body feel when we've balanced on one leg. So for a moment, settle your feet down in standing, close your eyes and just sort of see how do those two sides of your body feel. And sometimes I feel when I close my eyes after standing on one leg, that foot feels sort of like it's further down than the other one. And then open your eyes, find a point to focus your gaze on and then start to shift your weight onto the left foot. And we're bringing the right foot round the back of the left left calf, left ankle. The left hand comes up now and the right palm faces forwards with the right elbow a little bit bent. And then we're just settling here and breathing. We've got these soft palms facing forwards. We're trying to keep our shoulders soft and relaxed. We're just seeing how does it feel to be here? Right now. Settling, breathing. The breath coming in, feeling the breath leaving. Another cycle of breath, if that's possible, and then coming down, having a little bit of a shake. So we're going to come into a couple of cycles of some salute, but um, what we're going to do to start with is 
is I think not do not to take the lunges out and then sort of add them back in. So the first time we go into it on the first side, we won't do the lunges. So yes. So if you use if you do some salute a lot on your own, you'll have to really um, stay very focused to not go on autopilot and do your usual sun salute. So you're at the front of your mat now. So we've got mat behind us and with the hands in prayer pose. So exactly the same arms as we've had in the other sequence. And again, take a moment to arrive at the front of your mat, feeling your footprints on the floor, feeling the contact of your hands in prayer pose and Jali Mudra. And then from here, let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Let the breath come in. And then as you exhale, you're going to go down into the forward bend. Now, we're going to step the right foot back. Normally, it would be into lunge, but I just want you to step it back a little bit. So you bring your right knee down onto the floor. Yeah, so like a mini lunge. And then bring your left foot, your left knee back to join it. So you're on hands and knees. And then bring both hands onto the floor because from here we come into plank pose. So lengthen one leg back and then the other into plank pose. And just be in your long plank pose for a breath or two. And then from plank, let your knees come down onto the floor, keep your hands hands where they are, keep your toes tucked under, rock back into the sort of long child pose, but your elbows stay off the ground. It might be that your forehead touches the ground, it doesn't really matter. And then from here, as we exhale, rounding our back, we're going to travel forwards into face up dog. But all the way into our face up dog once more. Good, and then from face up dog, we're going to come up into dog pose. So starting to, that's it, rock back a little bit, tucking the toes under. Now it's quite a long dog again, so it might be that you want to walk your feet in a little bit. And then again, normally from here, we would be stepping the right foot forwards into lunge, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to come down onto hands and knees. And from hands and knees, you're going to step, bring your right foot forwards between your hands into lunge. Okay. But we're in a mini lunge, so we're not even gonna walk this leg back yet. So from here, you're going to exhale, and then you're going to step this back foot forwards into your forward bend. Let your head go. Feel your weight in your heels. And then we're going to roll up into standing. So touching the backs of the hands together, rolling up into standing all the way up. In this standing you could come into a little mini back arch if you like, so letting your pelvis come forwards a bit. You might need to bend your knees to drop your tailbone. Good. And then back down into prayer pose. Lovely. So we're going to slightly, do slightly more with the lunges this time, but still not fully. So from here, let a breath come in. Exhale, take your arms down and then up. Good, let the breath come in. And then exhaling into your forward bend. And from this forward bend, you're going to step your left foot back again into a mini lunge. But once you're in that mini lunge, then you're going to walk the foot back behind you. Yeah, so then you come from that being in that mini lunge, you've walked your foot back into more of what we know is a sort of full lunge. Now, this is one of the trickiest bits of a sun salute. We come from lunge into plank pose. So I just want you to negotiate this the best you can. It might be that you need to bring this knee back in again from lunge, or it might be that you need to bring your front foot back onto hands and knees. So, or you come slightly through dog pose into plank pose. Good. And then from your plank pose, keep your hands where they are, let your knees come to the floor, Toes stay tucked under, you rock your hips back over your heels, your elbows stay off the floor, but your forehead maybe touches the floor. Let the breath come in, and then as you exhale, round your back to the ceiling, travel forwards into face up dog. <sighs> Arrive in face up dog for a breath or two, and then exhaling, you're going to be moving into dog pose, however works for you. Once you're in dog, 
maybe stepping the feet in a little bit. Now, again, from here, we're not going to be stepping the foot forwards into lunge. We're going to be coming back onto hands and knees and then stepping the foot forwards. So left foot forwards. But this time, I would like you to make sure you're in a full lunge again. So it might be that you need to walk your back leg back a bit. So we're in this lunge where we can really let the pelvis go. And we're going to see how does it feel from here to move into the forward bend. So we've got to be able to plant our weight down into our front foot, push off with the back foot to come forwards into our forward bend. Let the head go, let the arms go. And on an exhalation, sinking into your heels, touch the backs of your hands together, roll up into standing and on, if you like, into your little back arch. And then back hands into prayer posts. So we're going to come back onto side one of Sun Salute. This time we will step back fully into a lunge from our forward bend, if that works for you. So hands in prayer pose, let a breath come in as you exhale, arms down and then up. Let the breath come in, exhaling down into your forward bend. Let a breath come in and then as you exhale, step your right foot back into lunge. Now, once you're here, just see, are you, are you fully in lunge? Do you need to walk that leg back a little bit more? And then from here, we will come on into plank pose, however works for you. So if you need to go through dog, come onto hands and knees, that's absolutely fine. So stepping your front foot back into plank pose, however you can manage that. And then let the knees come down onto the floor, keep the hands where they are, tuck the toes, hips back over the heels, elbows stay off the ground, forehead can touch it, let the breath come in. As you exhale, rounding your back to the ceiling, rocking your hips forwards into face up dog. Let a breath come in here, and then moving up into dog pose, tucking the toes under whenever works for you, arriving in your dog pose, breath or two. So now I would like you to see how does it feel to, this is one of the fun bits of sun salute, do I got so fun? You might want to come up onto your fingertips in one hand, your right hand or both hands, stepping your right foot forwards into lunge. And if that doesn't work, it's absolutely fine. If your foot ends up not quite where you want it, you've got this point here where you can then shuffle it forward. So we've got our right foot between our hands. We're then going to sink into the right foot and step the left foot forwards into our forward bend. Touch the back of the hands together as you exhale, rolling up into standing, arms up to the ceiling, coming into that little back arch, if you like. And then hands down in front of you in prayer pose. So we've got one more side of sun salute. Um, do whatever works for you with the lunges. You could go back to something we did previously if the stepping forwards doesn't work for you. So hands in prayer pose, letting the breath come in as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Let the breath come in, drop the shoulders, exhale down into your forward bend. Let a breath come in and then step your left foot back into lunge. Make sure you give yourself a moment to come into this full lunge with your back knee on the ground, your toes tucked under, and then making your way into plank pose, however is most helpful for you. Arriving in plank pose, if you've gone through dog pose, make sure you come into plank and you're in this long straight line. And then let your knees come down, keep your hands where they are, keep the toes tucked. Fold your hips back over your heels, keep the elbows off the floor, rest your forehead down. Let a breath come in and then as you exhale, rounding your back to the ceiling, looking back as you move into one last face-up dog. Receive an inhalation in your face-up dog and then starting to send your pelvis back, tucking your toes under into dog pose. Maybe walking the feet forwards a little bit in this dog pose. 
And then we're going to be stepping the left foot forwards to our best ability. It might be you come up onto your fingertips or your knuckles in one hand, the left hand, or both. If the foot doesn't end up quite where you're hoping, that's fine. Shuffle it forward so your foot is between your hands. You can arrive in your lunge, you can have a breath here. And then as we exhale, last time, we push off with the back foot, we sink into the front foot, we step forwards into our forward bend. Let a breath come in, and as you exhale, rolling up into your side into your last standing back arch if you like. And if you're not sure what's happening with your pelvis, you can always bring one hand down onto the pelvis. Remember, you can bend your standing knees. Your standing knees, your knees. <laughs> you can bend your knees. <sighs> okay, and then have a good shake out. So we're going to be coming down to the floor through a forward bend and a squat. So if you wanted to, because after those standing back arches, I think it would be nice. If you want a book under your heels, have it to hand and then organize yourself. So if you know you're coming into a squat, it's really, you know, you might feel that you want to have your feet slightly wider apart. You want your feet really well organized. And yeah, start with them, just have the block to hands and start by folding down into your forward bend. And just, we've moved a lot into forward bends as part of a sequence, but now just have a few breaths in the forward bend and just be there. You could come into your weeping willow movements if you like, trailing your fingers around the front of your feet. You're just really feeling that in the forward bend, we're very rooted down through the heels and the upper body can release forwards. And whenever you're ready, you can start to bend your knees forwards over your feet, letting the pelvis drop. So at this point, the heels come up and you want to slide your book or block under them. Do so. And so, you know, as, as, I, as we all know, because I've gone about it so much, this is a place where we can let the lower back really lengthen out. So if your lower back is feeling a bit tight, it's just it's a sort of a helpful, safe place. Gravity can move backwards. And from here, we are going to sit down into cobbler pose. So you can put your hands on your feet. And I want you to sit in quite an easy cobbler pose. So it might be with your feet a little bit further forwards than we do sometimes. And we're not going to be doing pinwheel. In fact, we're just going to do a couple of, um, what do I say? Just a couple of little exploratory things. And we're going to be then coming onto our backs. So I would just like you to see at this point, if you were to fold forwards, how easy or hard is it? If you were thinking, I'm going to fold forwards towards my feet. You know, where do I get to? And if you don't get very far, that's absolutely fine. So that's one little test. The other one is, so if I lean back onto one hand, so I'm leaning onto my right hand and I'm using my left hand to catch the outer edge of my right foot. And I'm just seeing, if I come to here, where can I bring my foot to? Yeah. Might, again, it might not be very far at all. I'm letting my back round out. So it's opposite hand to foot. That's it, good, very nice. And then try the other side. So now I'm leaning back onto the left hand. My right hand is catching the outer edge of my left foot. So I'm just sort of seeing if I was to bring my foot up, letting my background out, where would it get to? So it's just a little bit of a measure. And then we're gonna do some things on our back and see whether any of that changes or feels a bit easier. First of all, lengthen your legs out and give your hands a drop. It's all, um, so it's all abdominals, but after all those plank poses, we're going to do a little bit of rolling, um, these ones rolling back. So it will start easy and then we'll get a little bit, a little bit more challenging. So be towards the fronts of your mat and come into this position. So you're folding forward. So I've got my feet quite a generous um, hip width apart. It's just helpful in terms of being stable. 
and you're folding forwards, the hands are coming towards the feet. And then all we're going to do to, to start with is this movement where we keep looking down and we start to slide our hands up towards our knees and we keep looking down and we probably end up looking at our belly. And then we slide forwards again and we're looking down at the floor. We slide the hands up towards the knees and we're looking down at the belly. Good. And we slide the hands forwards towards the feet. Now, actually, before we go any further, just bring your hands up to here. Because as you know, what we're going to do, you know what we're going to do, we're going to be rolling onto our back. You're trying to come to balance on this sort of between the pelvis and the ribs. Yeah, so you don't want to be, bring, tr you're trying to avoid bringing too much of the rib cage down onto the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> we don't always have that much choice about it. So we can slide the hands up towards the knee and then rock back onto the back, but not too much of the back. And then look forwards to come up again. I suppose it's, yeah, we're not letting ourselves go all the way down. But we are letting ourselves go a bit of the way down. So we want to go sort of beyond the back of the pelvis. So just, yeah, a few times going down, looking at your belly, coming back up, looking forwards. Keeping your knees bent, picking, Letting the feet pick up off the floor. I think that's obvious. We do these enough, don't we? So <laughs> you know what you're doing. It doesn't always make them any easier. And then of course we can do the delightful ones. If you've had enough, obviously lie down. We can do the delightful ones where from here we let the legs make them out. Oh, no, come up again. <laughs> we'll try doing three of those. So again, this trick is to try as we go down, not to go all the way down onto the back, onto the back of our ribs. So we're in this sort of long curve boat shape. Oh, not very easy to talk in. So we would do one more and then from that one, you can collapse down onto the ground. Rolling back, looking at your belly, remember, looking at your belly makes me look nice as you. Couple of breaths, oh. and then <sighs> down on your back. <clears throat> just yes. How nice is that just to lie? So lie however is comfortable. As I said, we will we will be moving here a little bit. But first of all, just let yourself rest. And it could be quite nice to let your head roll to the right and to the left after a few times. Let the head roll from side to side. And your legs can be long or your knees can be bent, whatever you prefer. Also here, it's quite nice to bring the hands onto your belly. And just now when you're lying down, the belly can be very relaxed. Yes, if you feel that you want to fold your knees into your chest, that's, you know, or anything that you feel that you want to do here now, for the next couple of minutes. And what I always feel I want, I want to do after I've done those boat poses where the muscles in the front of the body are very um, engaged, is to move into bridge pose where we're letting the front of the body open out and soften. So when you're ready, you can bend your knees, you can stand your feet on the floor and you can see how it feels two or three times to roll up and down into bridge pose. Rachel, I wonder if your feet would benefit from being slightly wider apart. It looks to me that your feet could be a bit closer into you, but again, I can't see the feet, so I'm sort of, yes, just from <laughs> what I'm seeing higher up. These are just observations. Good. Rashmi, your feet probably need to be closer into your bottom, I think. And Linda, for you, just check that your feet are not too close in. So, um, yeah, rolling up and down in bridge pose.
a few times and just yeah seeing how does it feel to let the front of the body open out sending your knees forwards over your feet and when you've done two or three bridge poses you can just let your pelvis settle on the floor and have a couple of quiet breaths And I'm going to talk you into this little series of movements, which I haven't taught for quite a long time. Um, and let's see how we get on. So what I'd like you to do is bring your, fold your right knee into your chest and then bring your right knee out to the side. So your left and your right ankle, sorry, is resting on your left thigh close to your knee. Good. Yeah, so this bit is familiar to you, but we're going to do something different here. So what I'd like you to do from here, yeah, you could just do a little bit of rocking from side to side on your standing foot. A little bit of rocking here. And then from that rocking, settling in the centre. So yes, Rosie, if you're rejoining us, we've We've got one, the right ankle on the left thigh and we're doing a little bit of rocking and then settling in the centre. And then what you're going to do is bring your hands and interlink your hands around the back of your head. And then from here, as we exhale, we're going to lift the head, gather the elbows in and round up a little bit. So we're curling up, we're lifting the head, the chest is softening back, the front of the body is gathering up. So it's like I'm a sort of mini sit up here. That's it, Rashmi, leaving your ankle on your thigh. Good. And just do that a few times, bringing the head up, bringing the head back down. Okay. And then from there, release your arms. And now I'd like you to see, can you catch <coughs> your right foot with your left hand? And then you're going to be bringing your foot towards your face. You're not trying to touch it. That's just a movement direction. As you do so, as you lift your foot off your thigh and bring it towards you, let the back of your pelvis come off the floor a bit. So the middle of your back press is down on the ground. Let's have a little bit of a look. And it might be... And Nigel, is that difficult for you to catch your foot? Um, my foot's not going to move any further. It's not going to move any further. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe just keep it there without moving it. You could imagine your foot moving. You imagine your foot moving in the direction of your head and tip your pelvis a bit so the tailbone comes off the floor. Yes. Okay. Just let the foot rest back onto the thigh again. Now we're gonna do those two movements together. So the hand, you're gonna have your left hand catching the foot. Nigel, you could just do the movement of the upper body. Um, the left hand catching the foot, the right hand supporting the head. And now we're bringing the head towards the foot and the foot towards the head. You're not trying to touch. What you're really trying to feel is that the middle of your back presses down onto the floor. So the pelvis tip tips off the floor as, yeah, the head comes up, have a little look. Okay, just, um, just do that movement again, two more times, but do half what you're doing, so make it smaller. Do a smaller movement. Good. Good. Okay. And then let that go. Let it all go. We'll do the other side in a moment. So it might be quite nice to lengthen your legs out or take both legs up towards the ceiling. So this movement I, I find can be really helpful for my lower back, which is the reasons we're doing it. It can create some quite nice length there. Okay, so a little bit of a lengthen out for the legs. 
And then you're going to come back to having your knees bent, your feet standing on the floor. This time let your left knee come towards your chest and then out to the side so your left ankle is coming on to rest on your right thigh, close to your knee. And just like we did on the other side, do a little bit of rocking on your standing foot. So rocking from side to side. That helps settle that foot. So eventually you're going to stop rocking, you're going to settle your standing foot, your right foot on the floor. And we're going to be bringing the hands to interlink around the back of the head. And you're going to start with that first movement where as we exhale, we're lifting the head, we're gathering the elbows in, we're looking towards the legs. And we're coming up and we're feeling how the middle of the back starts to press up the floor, the chest starts to soften and fold in a little bit. We don't have to push it too much, yeah? <laughs> so if it starts to feel too much like a sit up, then maybe you're doing a bit more than you need to. Just rest for a moment or do one more and then rest for a moment. Undo your arms from behind your head. And then you're taking your right hand towards your left foot. And you're going to be doing the movement where you bring your foot in the direction of your face. This is, it doesn't have to be a huge movement. And Nigel, if you're not lifting your foot, you could be imagining that movement, but you could also be tilting your pelvis slightly so the tailbone comes off the floor. And everyone who is bringing their foot off their thigh, use that tilting movement of the pelvis to help you. So you're letting the bottom part of your pelvis tip up a little bit off the ground to help you bring the foot towards you. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Try and keep, yeah, maybe not that much, Rashmi. So yeah, so you want to keep quite settled. The foot's coming towards you, but you don't want the whole of the body to start moving around too much. Might be that you're doing a little bit more than you need to. Okay, just rest for a moment. Bring your foot back onto your thigh. Yeah, yeah, rest with your foot on your thigh, if that's okay. If you need to lengthen your legs out, do so. And then you're going to do those two things together, like we did on the other side. So your right hand is going to catch your left foot. Your left hand is coming round the back of your head. And you're thinking about, we're well, not thinking, you're doing it. You're moving the foot and the head towards each other. It's probably helpful to do it as you exhale. And you might start off doing a bigger movement, going as far as you can. But then I'd like you to do less. Feel how the middle of your back presses on the floor. Make sure you're staying steady through the foot that remains on the ground. So make sure whatever movement you're doing, it's not making you wobble around too much. Good. And Nigel, you can be doing both hands, lifting your head, that little bit of tilting of the pelvis. That's it. So maybe just once, um, once more, twice more if you like, and then release your legs. Do whatever you like with your legs. Give them a little bit of a lengthen out onto the floor. A little bit of a roll. So in a moment, we're going to come over into back into that cobbler pose sitting and where we were bringing our head towards our feet and our feet towards our head and just sort of see if anything feels a bit different after doing this on our backs. And then we're going to do a little bit of breathing in sitting and in lying down. So when you're ready, make your way over into the cobbler pose. So you can just you know have a little experiment of how is it to fold forwards here and what maybe what we take more than anything else is if we are folding forwards in cobbler pose our back needs to round out and equally if we are going to bring our foot to, up and towards us and Nigel maybe don't do this one your back also needs to round out so you're not trying to keep your back straight 
Yeah, so if you're holding your foot, you're holding your foot with your opposite, the opposite hand, and you can lean back onto the other hand. That's, that's nice, good. good. And then you could just finish again by holding forwards a little bit and see how that feels. And you can take the weight back onto your hands, give your legs a bit of a lengthen out. And we're going to make ourselves comfortable for a little bit of sitting and breathing, and then we're going to come down and lie. And breathe. And we're going to come back to our biloma, well, in a moment, to our biloma breathing. Should we have that home? Hot out in the sun. But um, yes, first of all, we'll, we'll, we'll do something else. So, yeah, make yourselves comfortable. I've oh, got Shimmer Star as well. I just see Shimmer's tail. It's when, it's when um, people are moving their devices around. I've just cut my head off for a moment because I'm going to show you. We're going to be moving our hands with our breath. So, um, yeah, we're going to be moving our hands with our breathing. So as we breathe in, we're going to turn our palms up. And as we breathe out, we're going to turn our palms down a few times. And I'll mute you in a moment and we'll do this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to think about our pausing in the middle of our in-breath. So you'll breathe out with your hands down and then you'll start to breathe in and you're gonna turn your hands halfway so that you're resting the edge of your hands on your thighs. And then you pause and then you turn your hands all the way up and you carry on breathing in. So I hope that makes sense. We just pause here. We pause the breath, we pause the movement, and then we carry on. So we're putting this pause into our in-breath. And then we'll lie down and we'll do the same thing, putting a pause into our out-breath, and we'll be moving the hands on the floor as well. So just to start off maybe with the backs of your hands resting on your thighs, I think, and settling in sitting. I'm going to mute everyone at this point. Um, I'm not muted. So mute everyone at this point. And just before we start moving our hands with our breathing, if you need, to, if you want to do any little sort of rocking or swaying or circling and sitting, make sure if you're sitting with a wall or a sofa behind you, you've got your pelvis right up against the so if, if there's a gap under the sofa, you just want to make sure you're feeling that your hips are underneath your shoulders. That's it, not so that's it, not sort of forwards of your shoulders. If you've got a wall behind the back of your head, try to avoid the temptation of leaning your head on the wall. If nothing else, just keeping our head balanced on our spine keeps us alert. And then let the shoulders drop bringing your attention to your hands. So we've got our palms facing up and we're going to receive an inhalation here. And then as the out breath leaves you, turn your hands, palms down. And then when you receive your next inhalation, turn your hands back. And then once more as the breath leaves you, turn your hands down. So very much try to work at your own pace with this so you're not rushing your breath and you're neither trying to slow it down too much. So as your breath comes in, you're turning your hands up. As your breath leaves you, you're turning your hands down. Let's have one more cycle of breath before we move on to the biloma breathing, the pausing. 
So receiving an in-breath, hands turning up. Letting an out-breath go, hands turning down. Now, as you start to let the breath come in, turn your hands onto the edge of your hand and pause in the middle of your in-breath. And then as the rest of the in-breath comes in, bring the backs of your hands onto your behind. And then just let the out-breath leave you, turn your palms down. So for the first part of your inhalation, you rest the edges of your hands on your thighs. You pause in the middle of that in-breath and then for the rest of the inhalation, you turn your hands and rest the back of your hands on your thighs. And then exhaling, bring your palms down. So receiving the first part of your inhalation, rest the edges of your hands on your thighs. Pause, turn the palms face up, rest the back of your hands on your thighs, receive the rest of your in-breath. And then exhaling, palms down. So we're going to try that for three more cycles of breath. breaking our in-breath into two parts for the edge of the hands, pausing, and then the back of the hands. So last cycle of breath, breathing in half your in-breath with the edges of your hands on your thighs and then breathing in the rest of that inhalation with your palms up. And then just let all of that go and let your hands rest on your thighs and just have a couple of quiet cycles of breath where you're not moving your hands, you're letting your shoulders drop. You're letting your elbows feel heavy. You're feeling your head balanced on the top of your spine. And the weight of your pelvis settling onto the ground. Feeling your breath flow in, feeling your breath flow out. And then in your own time, make your way down into lion. And rest your arms on the ground beside you because we'll do a little bit more moving of the hands with the breathing. Just as we settle down. So lying down, making sure you're comfortable, making sure you're warm enough, maybe not too much of a problem today. Let your arms rest on the ground beside you. So come back first of all to as you breathe in, turning your palms up. As you breathe out, turning your palms down. And do that for a few cycles of breath. So palms down as you exhale, palms up as you breathe in. And then we're going to add the pause into our out breath. So receive an inhalation with your palms facing up. And then as you exhale, turn to the edge of your hands, letting half of the out breath go. And then turning your palms down and 
exhaling the rest of the out breath. And then turning the palms up as you breathe in. So exhaling in two halves, first with the edges of your hands resting on the floor, second half with your palms resting on the floor. We're just going to do three more cycles of breath like that. So breathing in, the palms face up. Two halves to the out breath, exhaling with the edges of the hands on the floor, pausing, exhaling with the palms of the hands facing down. Turning the palms up as we receive the inhalation. Exhaling, edges of the hands on the floor. Rest of the out breath as we turn the palms down. And just one more cycle of this breathing in your own time. And then resting your hands however you like. It could be palms up or palms down on the floor, or it could be your hands on your belly. And letting yourself settle, just feeling the movement of your breath within you. So arms on the floor beside you or hands on the belly. Letting the whole of the body settle down quiet and heavy for another minute or so by ring the bowl. So take your time, no rush. I will unmute you in a moment. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>